Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everybody. Is my voice clear to you? Yeah, hello, how are you? Samia. So guys, is my voice clear? Please answer in the chat. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, great. It seems that everything is working well. Can you see the screen as well? Is it clear? Yeah, okay. Great. So we're gonna start in minutes, but I'm just waiting for, for all people to join us. Because as you know, it's still 29 right now. So please give us give us a chance that people uh, should join us first. Yeah, sure. I'll send it right now. I, I think I'm live on YouTube too, so you can you, you can watch it there. But it's better to watch it here or to follow with me here because um, I would really appreciate your participation on the chat, right? Is my voice clear, guys? Because some people are saying raise your voice. Is my voice clear? Okay, so Samia, please try to use another device if you can, because I think my voice is clear. Yes, thank you guys. And I will send you the YouTube uh, link also if you would like to um, watch the session there.
So that's the link for people who are asking for it. Can somebody play this uh, live YouTube video and tell me if it's working? Please go start. Because some people do not have this link. <clears throat> they will watch on YouTube. So is it working? Can somebody play this uh, live YouTube video and tell me if it's working? Yeah, okay, it's working. That's totally all right. I'm sorry, I have to just wait for seconds or minutes so that all people can join us, if that's okay with you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, good evening, yes, good evening. Okay, so I think we need to start in order not to waste time. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna start by an introduction about our session today. And I'm going to tell you um, how important it is, especially for different levels. Uh, first of all, let me just work on that.
Okay, great. So from, from the title of this session, let me start recording first. Yes. Okay, great. So today's session is mainly um, about how to avoid the most common mistakes in grammar and, and writing. And, uh, you know, we, we've noticed that most of people who are taking uh, academic exams, like the TOEFL, like the IELTS, like the PTE, like um, any other learner of English language, they usually do or make those mistakes without realizing it, right? So those mistakes are made, um, you know, unintentionally. And we need to focus on them because once you really focus on these simple mistakes, your writing becomes better and also your speaking. It's, so today we're gonna work mainly on improving your writing and speaking based on improving your grammatical structure. Uh, this session is suitable for whom? It's gonna be suitable for all people whose level, uh, whose level, for example, is pre-intermediate, intermediate, or even upper intermediate, because uh, uh, those mistakes are repeated a lot in all different levels. And I know that this group right now, you, are of different levels, right? So I don't want it to be like a lecture. I don't want it to be like a one-way lecture. I just want it to be like um, a discussion. We want to learn from each other. So please, I would want you to, to share with us in the chat whenever you have the chance to, uh, because on the chat, people learn from each other as well. So again, please try to make this session interactive with me. I'm gonna ask some questions you need to answer in the chat. If you have any idea about anything, please share it with us in the chat. Share your, 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 your idea about the topic we're talking about. Because as you know, we are, we are of different level and we are of different background, different experience, right? Great. I will start first. Thank you, thank you, it's my honor. Uh, some people are saying the voice is low and I'm not sure. Can you confirm for one last time that the voice is clear? So if you can hear me well, just say yes or clear. Well, 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 we have lots of enthusiastic people today and it's gonna be very, uh, very interactive. Good. Let me share with you some questions to test your knowledge first in the beginning. So let's start where you are. I don't want to start by what I have, but I want to start, start on your levels, right? So please, I, I would share some uh, questions with you and I would like you to answer with me on the chat. I'm not going to give you explanations in the beginning about the answer, why is that correct and why is that wrong? But later, once we finish this quick uh, quiz in the beginning, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to explain every single rule we have uh, experienced in the beginning. Okay, clear? Okay, great. So let me share that with you first, the first question. So let's test your knowledge first before we start. Okay, great. The first sentence, I would like you please to share on the chat what you think and tell me, we closed the door behind us, like or as they told us. This is one misconception about grammar. Some people are using the two words interchangeably and today we're gonna want to uh, clarify it. Why is it like, why is it as, if it's as or like. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna tell you the answer right now and I'm not gonna tell you the explanation for the answer, but. I'm just testing your knowledge in order to proceed with this structure or not. We're, we're talking about number one, guys. We're talking about number one. Please, whenever you're answering next time, try to write the number of the sentence. So one as, and please do not answer the second sentence until I tell you, because we need to compare our answers. We're talking about answer number one. So most of people said as. Okay, well done. 
So as is correct, I'll explain later for people who don't know why as not like, because in formal speaking, some people are, are saying this, we close the door behind us like they told us, okay? So it's used interchangeably. And I will tell you why it's, 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 as not, it's not like. What about the second sentence? What do you think? Now you're gonna start answering the second sentence. I'm gonna make it clearer. So sentence number two. And I can see that some people are saying because and others are saying that. Okay, so I would like to say congratulations for all people who said that. You cannot use here because, and I will tell you the reason later as well. What about number three? Are this is a bit easy, but for some pre-intermediate levels, it will be a little bit hard. So whatever your level is, is I would like to participate with us in the chat so that people try to learn from you. Okay, well, 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 all people are saying fewer, which is great. And what about number four? Did your sister accept or accept the offer from that new software company? Here, the pronunciation is different and I, I, you might get the idea by just pronouncing the, the word, but when you're writing it, some people are using these two words interchangeably as well. So they, they, they are using them instead of each other's and that's why we need to focus on them as well. So I can see the right spelling right now from most of people. Well done. Let me choose the, the answers first. So here we chose, we chose fewer and here we, we chose accept. Let's go for five. What about the ceremony? Again, most of people are using among and between um, incorrectly. I would like you to think about your answer. Yeah? And for example, if you said among, think about why is it among? Why can't I take between? And if, you, if it's between, ask yourself, why between not among until we get to this point and explain it well. And some people are saying among. Okay, great. Let's move on to the second point or the next point, which is number six. Can you go for number six, please? Oh, good job, Samia. Yeah? This is a nice guess, but it's not only for places. Be careful. It could be for anything. That's why I want to clarify it, guys. Some people are answering or are saying the correct answer, but I think they still miss or, or are confused about the rule itself. So that's why we need to clarify it, even if your answer is clear or correct. Uh, some people are saying everywhere, right? So here among and here everywhere. Let's go for seven. <clears throat> the last sentence today before we, we proceed to um, our topic. Again, I've heard this sentence a lot in, in the speaking evaluation. Whenever you're, you evaluate any candidate who is taking the IELTS test, for example, he's usually saying this. For example, some some when, when the test itself asks you, um, describe someone who has, you know, a, an impact on your life. And then he says, okay, my grandpa learned me a lot, of course. So here, be careful. You, you need to choose taught because taught is a little bit different from learn. And we're going to explain everything about that as well. 
Okay, well, great. Good job, you're doing great so far. Let's move on to this sentence. This sentence has two mistakes in grammar. What do you think? What do you think the mistakes are? We were searching for a lot of information on the internet and it was hard for us to find what we want. Two mistakes in grammar. Can you spot them? Can you get them easily? Um, okay. Some people are saying informations. If you don't know why or the explanation for these answers, don't worry, we're gonna explain everything. Just proceed with us. Okay, you're great, great, great. All these people are great. Well done. Let's go for the last sentence in finding the mistake. Oh, the, oh let me just show you the mistake first. <clears throat> we were searching for a lot of information. This is the mistake, so you need to put it with <clears throat> without the S and here we need to put ED and we're gonna talk about cons the consistency of the tense. First of all, let me start by the difference between as, as if, and like, okay? Can anybody before we start tell me the main difference quickly, like a note, the difference between as and like, we're talking about as and like. What are the difference between them? I'm not talking about, um, you know, similes or when, you, when you're comparing two things together, like when you're saying, for example, uh, he's like a line. I'm not talking about this or as line. I'm talking about the, the part of speech. Do, can you think a little bit about the part of speech? Yes, you wanna say something, you're raising your hand. Can you please say it in the chat? Okay, so some people are saying as is the conjunction, as similar to because, great, good job, percent, good job. Um, amen as well. Okay, so like can, can be a verb. Yeah, of course, like can be a verb, but whenever we compare like with as, so we're talking about here conjunctions and prepositions. So let's have let's let's examine this uh, sentence. First of all, as is used as a conjunction, as some people said already. What is a conjunction? It means it should connect two sentences together, right? So you have to have a, a complete sentence and then another sentence after it. This is what we call a subordinating conjunction. So as is used as a conjunction. What do we mean by conjunction? Again, if, if some people don't know the, the, con the concept itself, it means it's used to connect two sentences together. Look at this. Look at the two examples. We closed the door behind us as they told us to do. Look at this sentence. So it was here. The wrong one was, was, we closed the door behind us like they told us to do. Of course, while speaking, some people are using like instead of as in informal language. And here, you have to differentiate between two things, formal language and informal language. In formal language, you're using it while you're speaking. So you can say, we closed the door behind us like they told us, but this, couldn't be written, couldn't be used as a standard English. So in order to use it as a standard English, you need to put as in the middle of the two sentences. Look at this. So here's the first sentence, and here is, or the first clause and the second clause. Okay, great. So here, as is used to connect two clauses. Let's have a look at uh, the preposition. First of all, let's have a look at as if. As if is the same as 
as, right? So it could be used with the same meaning, like this sentence. Look at look at this sentence. The old general looked as if he might cry when he talked about the word. Look at as if. It's connecting two clauses with each other. So the old general looked and he might cry when he talks about the word. These are two clauses. Very well. Let's have an example on, on like in order to make it clearer for you. What about like? Look at this. This sentence is non-standard. What does it mean non-standard? It means it's not acceptable in uh, formal writing. Why? Look at like here. Like, because some people think that look should be usually followed by like. Of course, it could be usually followed by like, but not with two clauses. It could be with like whenever you have a noun or a pronoun. I'm going to explain it now. But let's focus only on the fact that you cannot use like here in the middle to connect two clauses. Look at this. So instead of saying this, you need to use as or as if. Let's have an example on how to use like. I would like you to examine those three sentences. What about the part of speech of like? Like is a preposition. What is a preposition? In case you don't know, a preposition is like in, on, at, under. It's, it's used like these prepositions. If you have a, any preposition in English, if you have any preposition in English, it should have an object of proposition. What do you mean by an object of proposition? A noun or pronoun. Like for example, you're saying in my car. So car here is the noun, right? At the school, school here is a noun. So it's not a full clause, it's not a full sentence. And I, I don't want to, 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 to explain today the difference between the clause and the sentence because we're gonna explain it later in different other sessions. But today, let's focus on the fact that like is used as a preposition. So can you answer me in the chat, please, in order to make sure you understand. What comes after uh, like, is it, say yes or no, is it a clause or just a noun or pronoun? Is it a clause? What comes after like, is it a clause? Is it, yes, very well, like, like can be used when we talk about, yes, very good, very good use, very good. Basan, yeah, noun and pronoun, very good. So now, whenever you're putting any noun or pronoun, you're just doing what? You're just uh, using like. Examine the second sentence. I want to be a doctor like my friend. I did not continue. My friend is doing something or has something. I just said my friend. So this is a uh, what we mean by a noun or pronoun. So firstly, please try to avoid that. Another common mistake is that people usually do is the reason. I hear it a lot and I find it a lot in many writings, especially when you're writing um, uh, an essay or something. And people, when they try to give an example, what, what are they saying? They say, the reason these migrate is because they cannot survive in front water. What, what you've done here is a sort of, what do we call it? We call it redundancy. So redundancy means that you, the meaning of reason is the same meaning of what of we call it. Are they of the same meaning? Do you think they are of the same meaning or not? The reason and the word because. Okay, so they are not, they are with, with a similar meaning. Whenever you're saying the reason, that means you want to tell me because, right? So please do not repeat this, the two words in one sentence. What do we use instead? We use the reason gives me great is that, try to repeat it. That, that Whenever you're going to try to mention any reason, try to, to use the reason that, the reason that, not the reason because. Great. Let's move on to the idea that we've discussed in the beginning. And I told you about the word information already. Can you tell me first? I know that some people already got the idea from the beginning, but can anybody answer this? A or B is the correct one. 
internet helps us gain a lot of information and internet helps us gain a lot of information. Again, I know that some people are of different levels. That's why I need people who are, who are uh, having a higher level to help us in the chat so that can, other people can, can, can learn from us all. Let me check the chat. Oh, okay. So mostly people went for B and of course B is a correct sentence. Type. What are other words like information? Can I can I ask you? Information is a is a on is an uncountable noun. What do we mean by uncountable nouns? It means you can never you can never uh, put it in a plural form. I would like to get benefit from your experience in the chat and tell me and tell others what are other words that cannot be counted. Let's. Let's put them all in the chat so that we, we have a huge list of words that most of people understand that they cannot be uh, put in the plural form. I'll be waiting on the chat and I would like others, if you don't know, read the chat. Whenever I find anything that's not correct, I will tell you, but as long as I did not have a comment on the chat, it means that your answer is correct. Very good, very good guys, you're doing great. Perfect. Okay, I will I will show you a list so that to complete your list as well on the chat here. But let, let's let, let's focus on the second this exercise as well or the second sentence. Every country has its own customs and behaviors, right? When somebody wants to to tell us, you know, their behavior, he wants to put an s to the, the word. So because in English, you say it in a plural form. That's why we 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 miss use it okay so please can you tell me a or b is the correct one a or b the second the second sentence oh some people are saying a we're talking about the second sentence guys not the first one Okay, great. I can see A and B. Still, still, people are saying B. They still did not get the idea that the word information, guys. So the correct one here, of course, it will be B. Why? Because behaviors here cannot be counted. It's one of the words that can be that cannot be counted, and you cannot put it in the plural form. What are the or what is the list of words that I need to avoid putting in the plural form? I'll give you a list right now. Uncountable, great. So guys, some people are raising their hands, one or two people. I don't know if that, that's by mistake, but any, any of the questions, please uh, let them at the end of the session, okay? In order to finish this point. So here is the, a, a list of uh, some words that cannot be counted as well. Look at this. We have, for example, the word aid. I would like you to have a notebook or something to put these words in, like behavior, clothing, employment, equipment, furniture, health, information, pollution, software. I, you know, I've seen this a lot, softwares, really, in, in, in writing essays for the artists while we're correcting essays. So a lot, technology has lots of, or has made, or people has made, have made lots of softwares, right? So it cannot be uh, put in the plural, transport, okay? So the sentence here is a lot of information is, is available on the internet. Information, not information. Be careful about that. So here's the first point about the, about the words that cannot be put in the plural form. I can see on the chat, on the chat as well, some other good ideas like um, instruction. Right. Look, Asma is saying instruction. Okay, great. Let's discuss it together. We're not judging anybody. We want to learn, as I told you in the beginning. Can you tell me? Can we put? Can we say instructions? 
Yes, Basan. Basan told us. So, but Basan to told us today that instruction is a countable word. So it's easily uh, put in the plural form. You can just say, I, I gave him some lots of instructions, but be careful about the word information, about pollution, about help, and all these words. Great. I can see some other good uh, sentences as well. Okay, let's move on to the other point of uncountable. Right. Look at this. Nouns ending in ing as well, right? Nouns ending in ing. And people might think, might ask themselves, do we have nouns that end in ing? Because most of people, when I say, for example, farming here, farming, most of people think that this is a verb, right? And this is a misconception. Why do you think that it's a verb? Because farming, of course, you know, because it has the final ing form. And this is a misconception about verbs. Farming here, what do we mean by farming here? It, it, we, we mean actually the activity itself, the activity of farming, right? We do not mean like the verb. Okay, the gerund, very good. Some people are specialists here, I know. So this is a gerund, that's why farming. So can I say farmings? Or can I say, for example, swimmings or shoppings? I, I did a lot of shoppings today. Can I say that? Can you answer in the chat, please? I did a lot of shoppings. Because I know that most of people, when they're having a lot of, they tend to put an S after it, especially a lot of or many or something like that. But remember that we have two points you need to consider. The first point, which is what, which is the countable and uncountable words. And the second point is the I energy ending, which is a noun. Can you give me other activities that end in I energy and could be used as nouns? Just let us just brainstorm. Can you give me other activities? We have farming, we have training, swimming, shopping. Can you write more in order to help you practice? I'm very proud of you guys today because you're practicing a lot and you're giving us lots of great ideas. And this is how we should learn actually from each other. And I'm, I'm sure that half of the participants or maybe even more um, are, are learning from the chat. I just want to read. Exactly, Fanat. This is totally all right. Thank you for sharing that. Some people are saying watching, banking, speaking, playing, sailing. Taib. Okay. Can I can I ask you a sentence? Just choose one word from the words that end in I and G and write a sentence. I will I would like to check something because there is another common mistake here. Can you write one sentence? A short sentence using one of these words, like uh, ending in I and G and their uses it as an activity, not a verb. Okay, I'll wait for more answers in order to, to move forward or to move further. Okay, reading is a good, a good copy, great. Let me accept others. So parking in front of the hospital is not allowed. Great, planting is useful for the environment. Farming is the best work in the tropical area. Surfing the internet is my addiction. Great, great. I would like others to, to read those sentences because I did not find any mistake in the use of the activity right now. Well done, guys. Well done. Great. Good job. Right. So now we've been talking about countables and uncountables. So can we just do a quick exercise? Can you can you help me in that? Can you go for number one, please? Do not go for number two right now. Go for number one. Write the correct sentence or write the correct word in the chat. Write the correct word in the chat. Because I believe that you need to, to be trained in that for a while before we proceed to the next part. Let me say that you're doing great today. Clothing, very good. So now avoid using clothing. What about in developing countries or country? What do you think? Is it countable or uncountable? Let me check, check your understanding right now. 
finding a job is hard is hard today yes unfortunately it has yeah you, you, you're totally um, uh, true that's totally true okay great countries very good very good so we should say countries because countries is one word that can be um, put in the plural form well done what about three please uh, in any job interview, in any job interview, and for people who would like to introduce themselves, they have this mistake, this common mistake. Like, for example, I have 20 years of experiences, right? Okay, uh, experiences here. Whenever you talk about your experience, as people say on the chat, you can never say experiences, right? Okay. But there is another information, piece, piece, of, piece of information you need to, to know. Can I use experience? Can I put S sometimes to experience? My question is again, we said that experience is uncountable word, right? So we, we, cannot, we cannot put S, but some people do not know why. Oh, we can sometimes put S. Yeah, we can. We can sometimes put S, but what is the meaning that you really need? Can you write the meaning? Sana is telling us when you're talking about live ex experiment. Yes, thank you. This is all right. Okay. So again, I would clarify that again for people who, who have just entered or they're lagging or they have an internet problem. The word experience, when you mean your experience uh, at work, for example, it means or sorry, at this point, you can never put it in the plural form. However, okay, Haytham, this is totally all right. However, when you're using it with the meaning of the experiences you've been through, yeah, and for example, you have you've uh, you have been through different experiences, you have been uh, like experiments of life, right? As a situation. Thank you for clarifying that. What about number four? And we'll stop here. I will in this exercise. The company sells specialist softwares or software for computer what do you think well 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 great good job let me move on right now to another part because i think you already mastered this point and i will proceed with one of the most common mistakes that people usually face as well Number and amount. Um, in, in any academic test, like, uh, like for example, the IELTS test, I, I just want to comment on that. In any academic test, like the IELTS test, the TOEFL test, especially task one, as you know, in writing, the, they usually ask you to describe or to write a report about something. And the word, the number and amount are used a lot. And while correcting lots of writings, I've realized that most of people are using them interchangeably. They're saying the number of something, and it shouldn't be that one. It should be the opposite one. And I think some people already got the idea from the countable and uncountable. Okay, so what is the difference between number and amount? Let's, let's move on to this part. I would like you to tick or to tell me the correct sentence here. What do you think? Of course, another thing that I would like you, I would like you to know, whenever we're comparing two sentences with each other, with each other's, the mistake is clear, right? So the, the mistake starts to be clearer to you. That's why we're comparing them. But in, 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 uh, in ordinary uh, situations, in normal situations, most of people are mixing them. So the internet is becoming accessible to a growing amount of people and a growing number of people. When you read them po both, you, you will get my idea without explanation even, without explaining the, the rule, right? Let me check. Okay, okay, great. So people get the idea here, like number can be counted, right? Great, good job. So B is the correct sentence. Okay, so number of people, people can, can be counted, guys, is a word that can be counted. So you need to use number. I will, tell you, I will explain that in detail. Go for the second sentence, please. 
the table, and this is what I'm talking about in, in IELTS academic test. People who are describing a graph or a bar chart or any diagrams or a table, they're saying that the, the table shows the amount of uh, or the uh, the number of, and then they put the, the the incorrect word. And this is, of course, you know that one of the assessment criteria in the IELTS part, in the IELTS writing especially, is called grammatical structure, right? Or grammar accuracy, um, grammatical range and accuracy. I mean here, you're talking about understanding when to put that word, when to put that comma, when to put that capitalization. We have lots of things that we're gonna talk about even later about capitalization and punctuation marks. And I think that most of people lose marks because of capitalization and punctuation. People are saying A, of course, A is correct. The table shows the number of people who visited the gallery each day. So we're talking about here, the number of people. Great, let's talk about the rule itself. So what is the rule here? Let me check people who are waiting. The number, great. I would like, another thing that I would like you to pay attention to is that we use the number of. I only have one host here on this account, so I'm sorry, I cannot make anyone a host to help me even accepting others because my account only accepts one host per session. This is why I need to accept every time. Come on, uh, guys, by the end, inshallah, remind me that all people who attended this session will take a certificate of attendance and certificate of participation in this uh, lecture. And uh, but just remind me at the end, you need to write your name, uh, your name on the chat, right? Like the first and the second and the last name in order to give you in order to give you the certificate right after uh, the session. Just remind me at the end, please. The number of counting. Great. So we use the number of or amount of to talk generally about a quantity. And when we're talking about a quantity, guys, a quantity, can you help others and tell them, is it countable or uncountable? Can I count them? Can I put S and use it singular and plural and things like that? So quantity means countable or uncountable. Great, good job. You're saying in the chat, uncountable. And this is totally all right. So the first rule is whenever you're using the amount of, the, the amount of to talk about a quantity, but we're, we're using the number of to talk about, you know, the number, it should be here countable. Look, the number of passengers, but here you say the amount of water, try to differentiate between the two words. Okay, great. Let's move on to the second rule, which is, the, the the amount of so before the amount of is used before uncountable nouns right look at the sentence if we look at the amount of energy if we look at the amount of of uh, food the amount of information the amount of money the amount of time the amount of waste okay totally all right the amount of plus uncountable. Great, good job. Thank you for sharing with us those important tips, those important structures. Okay, um, let me just erase that. Here are some examples. So the chart shows whenever you are having this IELTS academic test, you're saying the chart shows the number of hours people usually spend on their mobile phones, okay? This chart shows the amount of energy, right? So we're talking about amount of energy, number of people, number of hours, anything. Let's have a quick, a quick and simple exercise. Number one, please. The what passengers carry each year has risen gradually. The number of certain number of certain amount, great, good job, very good. So the first one should be the number of. 
What about the second sentence? Some people will say amount because you need to get one sentence number and one sentence amount, but I don't know. Check, check first. Check the sentence and read it carefully. Base your answer on the rule we've explained. We need to reduce what water we waste. We waste. So here, okay, great, great. Russia is mad, the center mean all people are great. Sorry, sorry guys, not to say Mr. or Ms. because we need to be a little bit, uh, you know, I, I need to, to have a quick communication with you. So sorry for that, I'm really sorry. Um, of course, you all have the respect. Let me just go for the next part. Incomplete comparison. Okay, before, before I proceed with the meaning of incomplete comparison, I would like someone to tell me what do we mean by incomplete comparison? Let's just brainstorm together. What, what does it mean incomplete comparison? What is a comparison? And what, is, what does it mean to be incomplete? I don't know. Can you tell me because uh, I'm really confused about this point? Think, just think. Indefinite number. Okay, we're talking about now the meaning of incomplete comparison. Let me put it straight on the screen here incomplete comparison because it seems a little bit you know messy sometimes when you're just comparing can can you write in the chat what, what you think of incomplete comparisons Maybe comparative or superlative adjectives. Superlative adjectives, great. Muhammad is saying to compare between two things. Okay, Muhammad, yeah, you're, you're totally true. Comparing between two things. But what, what, what do you mean by incomplete? Mm, I'm saying, can I have a larger pizza? Of course, you know the, the pronunciation of pizza, right? Uh, anyway, I will talk about some pronunciation problems maybe today or next session, but the items are not mentioned directly. Mm, good job, Haytham. You're doing great. Can you have a nice guess? And different criteria. Yeah, I, I appreciate your effort. I appreciate your effort. Forget the part of the conversation, no magic criteria. Great. Look, look at the look at the second this sentence and tell me what you think. Look, our COM model is faster, better, and stronger. I'm sure, and I, I'm going to assure to you as well that 90% of people who are making comparisons are making incomplete comparisons. What do you think is wrong about this sentence? Our COM model is faster, better, and stronger. Okay, when I tell somebody that my car, my COM model is faster and better and stronger, is it complete? Now, now you will get the idea from the, the example. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Hanan. Thank you, Ms. Hanan. So faster than what? Okay. Better than what? Great. You need to ask yourself. Look at this. You ask, you gotta ask yourself, faster than what? Better than what? Is it is it is it faster than an older model? Is it faster than the train? Is it faster than the plane? I don't know. This is what we call incomplete comparisons guys incomplete comparison in order to be grammatically correct you need to balance the two uh, sentences look at this look at this sentence it's ex expected that men are more willing to work harder right it's expected that men are more willing more willing look at this this is the comparison to work harder ask yourself harder than what can you complete that sentence to be correct can you complete it yes and i've seen this hundred times whenever they are of course whenever you are taking any academic test or learning or is the sat test or the rgcsa test or any other formal test People usually write fast, my car is faster. Okay, or whenever they're comparing two things together, they are forgetting about what should they put by the end. Okay, great, I can see some of them women. Oh, really? I didn't want to say women because uh, I, I feel they're, they're gonna be angry because they will tell me that women are more willing to work harder. 
than men. So yes, I this is my sentence too. It's expected that men are more, are more willing to work harder than women. And I don't want to be mad at me, please. But what do you think? Is it right? Is it is this sentence true? Are men working harder than women? What do you think? Yes or no? Of course, we have lots of you know females here, and uh, I'm afraid. I'm really afraid. What do you think? Is that sentence true? Are we working harder than than you? Harder? Yeah, I do. <laughs> no, no, that that's look. You know, they're gonna you know. Yeah, and not not biased. Yeah, it's grammatically correct. I'm not talking about grammar now, guys. I'm talking about the fact itself. Are, are men usually working harder or willing to work harder than women? Yeah, I think you're... Can you can you please confirm if my voice is clear? Because some people are saying the voice. I'm, I'm not sure it's clear or not. Yeah, thank you. So guys, people who are, who are complaining about the voice, please um you know change the device do something about it rejoin because it's not it's not from the source so i can see dramatically unfair <laughs> you are multitasking but she's telling you so there maybe that's that sentence is, is true because it's not actually telling you that we are working harder than you it's willing willing to hard so willing still on the first stage we are willing to work harder but we never work harder right it could be understood in this way. Anyway, we this is what we call incomplete comparisons. You really need to balance your comparison. And so here is another sentence. The local government promised to spend 15 15% more, 15 more on welfare. More on welfare than what? Than the local government promised to spend 15 more on welfare than the federal government did. Look at this. You need to have two complete comparisons and um there's one thing about grammatical range and accuracy yeah about the sentence structure and uh, the types of sentence simple compound complex compound complex sentences but, but let me let me tell you about this just right now after this another miss uh you know or um, another common mistake that people usually do which is a lot the word a lot right I can see it written as in one word, like this. Look at this. People usually write it in any academic writing like that one. Look at lot. So you need to separate the A from lot, especially when you're writing with your hand. Please. Some men are suitable for specific professions. Yes, for them, you're totally all right. Um, I'm talking right now about a lot. So be careful. Do not write it as one word. Separate it. Always separate it. Between and among. The one that we explained, we had a sentence about in the beginning. What's the what's the, the actual difference between between and among? Guys, between and among are the same. It's not about places, as some people said. It's not about people. It's not about something specific. But it's about the number. What, how it's about the number. Between when referring to two things at a time. So I'm sitting between someone and the other one, between this object and the other object. So between is not the same meaning of among, because among here, look at use among, when referring to three or more, starting from three, like I'm sitting among my friends, right? I did not say two friends, could be three or could be four, could be many friends. So among, you usually use among, when you're referring to three or more, but use only between when you're talking about two. And this is another common mistake that we usually face. Uh, both are correct, Muhammad. A lot of news and a lot uh, and much news, right? Because a lot of can be used also with uncounted. Great. Let's move on to the second sentence. So here's the second example. We divided the fruit among the four of us. Here among is used to talk about more than two people, two groups, two ideas, two places, two objects, two anything. Okay, well done. So be careful a lot, separate the, the A from lot. Be careful when to use between and among. And about fewer or less, and I believe that this is could be, this could be, you know, 
easy for people who are intermediate level or upper intermediate. But if we have some people who are lower intermediate right now, be careful that fewer is used when you can count the word after it and less is used when you can never count the word after it. Study the two examples in order to get this idea. Look at this. Because of the drought, because of the drought, the trees produced fewer apples. So apples here could be counted. That means you need to put fewer before it and use less salt, less salad, less rice, less oil, anything that cannot be counted. So be careful, few with it. what's what comes after. It's like the number of, right? You try to link it with the number of we have counted in a way. And, and less, it's like the amount of, we're talking about something that's few. Another common mistake that I usually say is that whenever you're comparing two things and you're using the EST, look at this. The, this sentence is incorrect. Why is it incorrect? Fewer refers to counting nouns, well, let's go on to Greg. Good job. A lot of news is you're welcome. Great. Right. Of look at this. Of the two puppies, some people are saying which is cute. Whenever they are asking about two things, they are saying which one is um is is cheapest, which one is fastest, right? So be careful. Whenever you mention two things, right? Make sure you're using the ER, cuter, faster, right? Shorter, taller of the two men. Who is the tallest? Well, who is taller of the two men? Who is tallest? Who is the tallest? Well, who is taller? What do you think? It's the same as this one. Yes, be careful because it feels correct when you pronounce it like of the two men, oh, who is um, taller, tall, who, who is the tallest? You, we usually do this, but be careful that, that we, we're talking about whenever we're mentioning two, we use the ER with short adjective. Another common mistake is that one. Yelani can sing better than any member of the chorus here. What do you think of prob the problem in this sense? First of all, it doesn't feel or that there is a problem or you do not feel that there is a problem here. Yelani can sing better than any member of the chorus. Right? So the problem here is that include, I would like you to study this example carefully. Look at the non-standard. Non-standard means incorrect. It means you can never use that, right? However, it seems, it seems, it feels correct from the beginning, but it's not. Look at the two sentences, study them carefully. From comparing them together, you will get this idea, right? Okay. Um, so here, the standard one, you only could, or can sing better than any other member of the group. Whenever you're comparing, whenever you're comparing between one and his group, like for example, if we are a team and you want to, and I'm a player and you want to say that, that I am better than the other players, for example, you have to include the two words. You can choose else or others, be careful. So why? Because here, uh, this name, Yuleni, is, <clears throat> is a member of the course, right? So this is a member. It's one of them. She's one of them or he's one of them. That means you can never compare one to his group only. You just have to say any other because other here gives the meaning of you're comparing this one to different members inside the group, inside the team. Okay. So any means she's not a member. Any other members of the group, it means it's, she's a member. We will have some exercises later about this as well. Avoid using double comparisons. What do we mean by double comparisons? Before, before I move on to the rule itself, can anybody tell me what do we mean by, by using double comparisons? Can you write a sentence 
that has a, a double comparison? Thank you, Sana. Thank you. I'm really flattered. Thank you. I hope it's very useful to you. Uh, what about avoid avoid using double comparisons? Oh, great! More better, more than two. Um, yeah. I mean, instead of writing examples, I'd like you to write example. Uh, sorry, instead of writing the rule, just write a sentence that has uh, that has this mistake that has double negative. Uh, sorry, not double neg negatives, double comparisons. I can see much more, more better. Unless you're tired. Okay, so using the two kinds of comparisons, she was more taller. Look, look at look look at the sentence from Fanet. Yeah, he he's more bitter in English than his father. We're doing this mistake a lot. We're using the ER along with more or any other comparative form. Let's have a look at this mistake and let's try to correct it together. So what is a double comparison first? Is the use of both ER and more or less or both together or EST and most. I don't like theoretical explanations. Let's go for the examples. I would like you to study these two examples, right? The standard and the non-standard. For people who just joined us, be careful that non standard means incorrect, incorrect, guys. This is not a correct word, right? But the second one is, is, is in green. Let me put it in green because green feels like correct. And the other one in yellow. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> in red. Okay, so Houston, Texas is more larger than Dallas. Look at this. More here, this is wrong. And here you have ER, right? So this is what we call double, double comparison. You are putting two things. Uh, he is the tallest and, and fastest in the team. Mm, okay. But, so, this is correct, but some people are saying he is the most tallest and fastest in the team. This is what I'm talking about, double comparison or top double. Uh, hello, hello, Basmala. So double comparison or double to form. So be careful to use only one comparison, right? Larger than Dallas. So Houston, Texas is larger than Dallas. Um, good job. And let's move on to the second sentence. But before I tell you the rule, I would like you to think. I really like thinking, guys. So I don't want to give you the, the rule directly. I, I really need you to help me because I really don't know this. Avoid using double negatives. I forgot it. Can you tell me a sentence that has double negatives because I really, you know, I forgot this sentence. Okay, T just help us please and tell us one sentence that has double, neg double negatives, not double comparisons. People are still telling us double comparisons and this is good. It means that they want to apply in the other, in the previous example and this is, or if I'm talking too fast guys, please tell me to hold on. I know that this is something that they always do. Please tell me, hold on. Um, he does not never eat, he does not never eat fresh bread and is, is, is doing a great job today guys is she's helping us she's club she's collaborating with us and she we're, we're all learning from her she's in she isn't never yeah great I haven't never very well all is not never great yeah you, you can say that Muhammad much more expensive this is totally all right he he is no type Let's try to learn more about that. I, I've seen lots of good ideas, but let, let's add more on that. Look at this non-standard sentence. I don't have no chores left to do. Look at this. We have two negatives here. Let, be careful because step by step, I will give you other words that you might be confused with. I know that this is a little bit clear, but I would like you to get the idea first. We have two negatives. What are they? Do not, right? Look at this. And at the same time, the word no, do not, and the word no, okay. But this is easy, mister, because we know that no is an, a negative word, but some words, some words do not feel like they are negative and people are putting them in the sentence as a negative word, right? So we need to avoid putting two negative words. Uh, some people are saying uh, any, let's just, uh, See the correct answer. 
I don't have no chores left to do. You can just say the standard one, the correct one, as I told you here. I have no chores left to do, as I've seen in the chat. And, oh, I don't have any chores left to do. So whether you choose this or that. Oh, great. Right. We did not finish so far. And here I need you to tell me what are some words that could be used as negatives or negatives again like like that, that, that again my question for people are like can you give me more negative words in order to to tell people who do not know to learn from from from, from us any no We're not judging you. We're learning hardly, seldom, never great. Okay, I would. What are hardly? Those words are another negative word. And for example, when you're saying when you're when, when you want to study, for example, for for any sort of any academic test, and you want to say, I can't hardly study. for the test. For example, this is a very simple sentence. Some people do not notice, they think that hardly means hard. No, 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 no. hardly here does not mean that you do it hard. No, 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 be careful. It means, it means you are unable to do that. So if you erase, this is a double negative, this is incorrect. So erase the, the not, and you just say, I can hardly study for the test. I can hardly study. It means, this sentence, it means that I cannot study. So the other meaning of the sentence is, I can study for the test. Okay, we have here T, great. Uh, the same as seldom, the same as scarcely. But there are other pronouns that are negative, guys. Let me check the chat because I have lots of great ideas there. Some people are saying hardly. Can I study for the test? Yes, that's totally all right. I can hardly no longer describe the strong adjective. No more. Great. Uh, what I want you right now, please, to write a sentence. No, not a sentence, please. I would like you to write a pronoun that could be negative. What? Yeah, the pronoun itself, like I, he, they, something like that, could be negative. What is that? Can you think of it? Again, my question. Can you write any negative pronoun that gives it a negative form? I would like you to have a look at the chat in order to get some ideas. Some people are saying no one what else rather than no one. So whenever you're saying no one means a negative, you don't have to put the verb in a negative form. Okay, so no one. The, the rule itself, no one or nothing.
Hello, everybody. I'm sorry, but I had an internet issue. Can you hear me now? Um, I think there is a, uh, yeah, a poor connection. Something happened. Can you hear me now? Please tell me. Chat that my that my voice is clear because I yes what well, not clear mm, 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 okay good voice I don't know J just tell me some feedback about the voice while I'm working please let me check the connection okay great uh, let let me continue and please whenever you're having any sort of difficulty listening to me just give me a feedback some feedback on the chat okay. Yeah, because some people are saying clear and others are saying not very well. If it's clear for some people, it means the problem in the other sources or in the other devices. But anyway, so we we're talking about the negative words, like no one, nothing, um, uh, all these words are negative too. We have a, an exercise to, you know, to reflect on what we've studied so far. Can you just go for the first sentence? Who will carry the heaviest of the two grocery bags? What's, what's wrong about this sentence? Can you just write the correct word after understanding uh, the, the comparison? Yeah, so answer this question, please. I think I think the problem is in the number of anti at, attendees on the chat here because Zoom, whenever we have um, lots of participants, that usually happens. Um, some people are saying heavier. Who will carry the heavier of the two groceries? Remember, because we have two uh, uh, two objects or two. Yeah. What about number two? Lisa runs faster than anyone on her track team. Remember the incomplete, com incomplete comparison or the one that I told you about. So we're talking about Lisa and her team. Oh, people are saying fastest and the heavier. Heavier is okay. So here, carry the heavier of the two. What about number two? Lisa runs faster than any anyone what should i put after one anyone or any other one yeah great this is all right very good so lisa runs faster than anyone else on her track team remember we're comparing Liz this team so you cannot just say this is the most cheapest necklace in the store Okay, well, well done. What should I erase? The cheapest. to erase the word most because it's a the cheapest that cheap let's have a section of mistakes and one sentence on these four sentences have three of them are written incorrectly one of them is correct can you write the letter that's fully correct without any mistakes based on the the um, the ideas we've been talking about today Okay, the sound. What about the sound now? Can you hear me? No, 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 guys. I don't want you to tell you to tell me about incorrect ones. I just want to tell you. Uh, I just want you to tell me which one is written correctly without 
any mistake. يعني three of those sentences from A to D are written incorrectly. Incorrectly. But one is written uh, correctly. What is that one? I'll give you some time to think. Do not correct, please, guys, now. Do not correct. I just want you to tell me the sentence that is fully correct. Please, just write the sentence that's correct. We're going to, we're going to correct the wrong ones later based on the rules we've studied today. So some people think it's D. Um, as Matt thinks, it's C and D are correct. I think people who are confused, they didn't, they missed some important parts of this session. That's why they are they are using it incorrectly. But don't worry, we're gonna explain it now, right now again. So my question for one last time: which sentence of the four is totally, fully, grammatically correct without any uh, uh, mistakes or errors? So usually you are confused, okay? Some people are saying C and others are saying D. Ah, uh -huh, great. But more votes are going for C, but still other people are saying D. So I don't know. Still, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the um, the answer. Just some people said A. Okay. I would like to say congratulations. So people who said, I would just mark it, C, not D. We have, we have, you know, a sort of fighting on the chat. Some people are saying, no, it's C. Some people are saying, no, it's D. I believe it's A, okay? I would like to say congratulations for people who said that C is the only correct sentence, right? Okay, some people might ask themselves right now, why D is not correct? Why A is not correct? Why B is not correct? That's why we need to help them guys, right? So please, if you really understand it, tell me what's wrong about A? Mr. John looks like he just got a $50,000 raise. The first, let's talk about A first. A is not correct. Can you correct it? Tell me what's, what, how can I correct it? Some people are, are jumping to D. Okay, I would I want to answer D. I don't want to answer A. But please answer A first. Okay, some people went to another. Another rule that I need to explain later. Thank you, Hussam. Thank you, Hussam. Hussam, I think you've been following us from the beginning of this session, right? Yes, thank you, Nirmeen, as well. Look, look, at, look, look at the answers of Hussam and Nirmeen. Because I, they are repeating the same thing I told them about in the beginning, right? But people who, who, who entered late, no, it's not looks like who. We said, guys, in the beginning that like is a preposition. It's not a conjunction. Yes, Basmala, thank you, a noun or pronoun. So like is a is a preposition, not a conjunction. So it cannot link two clauses, right? Yes, so instead of like, in order to make it correct, you need to put as. Mr. John looks as, or looks as if he just got, but like is incorrect because it's not a conjunction. So this is the first one. If you, if you still do not understand it, get after this session, the, the session is recorded. Some people said dollar is not dollar. This is, no, no, it's dollar without the S. And this is another common mistake that I will tell you about later, right? Again, dollar here is, uh, 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 is not countable. We cannot put it in, in, in the plural form. But I don't want to stress on it right now. I will stress on it in, on other sessions if we have, inshallah. What about the second uh, letter B? What's the problem in it? Can you go for letter B? Reason, I mean, well done. Sam, well done. We have that instead of because. Well done, guys. That should be instead of because. Yes, 
totally all right. I appreciate your effort, guys. You've done great today. And I can see that lots of people remember what we've been talking about since the beginning. We can never use reason and because together, whether you use because or whether you use reason. But if you want to use reason instead of because, as Basmala said, as Ayman, as Tana, Sara, Basant, all these people are actively participating. So instead of because, we need to say that. Not because, do not include. This is redundancy. Redundancy means you're adding, um, you're adding different other words to the sentence that are not important. You know, do you know what's similar, similar to what? Similar to a sentence that I remember, like for example, for example, if you want to say, I want to retake the test again. Is it similar? No, no, I want to retake the test again. I, I listen to this a lot as well. I I want to, oh, sorry, Bismillah, you're Samia, that, sorry for that. So I want to retake the test again, right? There is a sort of redundancy. Do you, do you know what is the redundancy in that sentence? Redundancy means extra information that you don't have to include because you've already mentioned that. Thank you, thank you. Is it Miss Misa, right? I, I can hardly spell that name. Can you hear me now? Because I, I got disconnected again for some reason. Can you hear me now? I'm really sorry about that, but I don't know there's um unusual problem today that I don't know. Maybe again, I've never experienced this before, 
but because the number wasn't that that a little bit big, so maybe Zoom is experiencing. I'm sorry about that again. It's the last one. We said that few fans went to a concert and it was embarrassing. This is correct. And but before we move on to D, I would like to tell you about one mistake that people usually do. Yes, I love Dalia. Thank you. But what about C? People usually do not put the comma or end. Whenever you're combining two sentences using and, it's called a compound sentence. The recorded session as Matt will be on, on, um, on different other groups, right? The one that you joined from, right? So the, the place where you press the link from, you can just find the recorded session there. Yes, exactly, Asma. So when before and, before or, before but, uh, so uh, all these, card, we call them coordinated conjunctions, we usually put a comma. Remember, when you're linking two sentences with and, make sure and have the most common mistakes as well. We, before, mm, no, unless it's in the beginning of the sentence. Yani, uh, before Kaza, and then you put a comma. But in the middle, you do not put a comma. We're going to talk about punctuation marks later if we have any other session soon. There were a lot of people in the garden. The last, What was the last problem here in order to finish this session? There were a lot of people in the garden. Can you please advise people who enter late? What's the problem in that sentence? Okay, well done. You need to separate the A from lot, right? So here, a uh, lot. Thank you guys for your active participation. Thank you for being, you know, helpful today. I really appreciate it. And I think we benefited a lot from your experience today. Yes, exactly, a lot, not a lot. Um, that's why I really appreciate your effort, and I'm so sorry about the internet interruption. Um, so, uh, yeah, do, do you have, thank you, thank you, thank you, I'm honored, I'm honored to be with you today. And um, you, you're, you're, you're most welcome. Uh, Hussam, yeah, about your Question. Yes, we're going to talk about punctuation later. I will tell you about that. Thank you for your, your nice feedback. I'm, I'm really humbled. I'm really flattered. Uh, we wish you luck for what, Basant, please. Thank you. Thank you, Heisen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And I'm sorry about the titles again. I'm sorry. I need to be faster. You're, you're, you're most welcome. Thank you. Um, somebody wants, wants me to wish him luck for what? Yeah, you, so you can write in the chat. Um, wish you wish you luck in what exactly? Uh, yeah, okay. There, there will be some material. Okay, I will send to Mr. Rida. He will send you some material. Uh, just, uh, you know, the, the place where you found the, the, the link, just uh, go there on this group or any other group you joined from. And then you will find some material. He will send you some useful material. And I would like you, please. Oh, okay. Good luck. Good luck, Basant. The certificates. Thank you, Sana. So can you write your name? Your, your name, your second name, and your last name. Okay. Please, Mr. Renew, just take those names. And so we can make just some certificates for them. Just write your name, guys. The first, the second, the third one. The family one. Oh, really? I really like that. Thank you, Hussam, for that. Because you know why I liked it? Because I really like excitement, right? Whether in learning, whether in playing. So learning is not different from playing or having fun. It should be like that for your, your, for your feedback. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Iman. This is, I'm very flat to know what to say. So guys, please write your, your names. Mr. Rida, please take screenshot of that or help me to take those names in order to give them some certificates. 
yes, Mr. Rida shared the link, guys. You can just access that link and he will give you everything related to that. <laughs> Look, Basant learned something today. Really appreciate it. Great information, not information. It's great. Good job. Now you started applying on what, what, what we've started today. Inshallah, there will. There will be an inshallah. Inshallah, there will. And whenever I, ha I have the chance, I really want to make um, a sort of these uh, sessions because I really want to help in this field. Um, so I think now all people, if you if you wrote your name, you can just leave. I would just say thank you for your participation. You can just, uh, is there a next session? That I, I will tell you in the group, Shema, please, because I, right now I don't know when, I don't know um, because I really need to, to have some sort of scheduling first. So please, whenever I have any sort of this, I will not be late putting and publishing it on different groups. So just write your name and you can leave. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you, Iman. I'm, I'm very flattered. Thank you. You know, you know, grammar is is a little bit theoretical. Theoretical, it means like giving some rules. And I feel that sometimes when you're teaching grammar, is a bit it's a bit boo. You know, it's a it's a little bit different from teaching reading or listening or something like that. But inshallah, we will make other fruitful sessions in how to um, to avoid uh, you know common mistakes in pronunciation in the spellings how to master readings but in order if you want me to tell you a specific time i'm sorry i can't but inshallah i am again i'm planning to do lots of more sessions lots and more sessions okay ali and mr goma great just write your name please and you can leave in order not, not to waste your time Always welcome, always welcome, I always welcome connect. With all respect to your title, guys. No, I didn't before, Iman, but next time, inshallah, or the next few months, I'm planning to do something like that, something similar. So, Mr. Mr. Rida sent you a group that he will, you can get uh, the certificates from. And also, uh, here is my group, you can join. If you want more lessons, more anything about that. Thank you, Hanan, for that. Thank you. Um, Ayman, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't. Ten is a, is a bit late here, and I uh, I have some work. So is it, isn't it good at 9 or 9.30? Yeah, here is my group, if you're asking about it. And also try, try to join the other group in order to get your certificate. Thank you, Muhammad. It's my honor to have you here today. I will try to make it late if, in case it, that helps. I think you finished writing your names. I finished writing, you finished writing your names, but I'm not sure if he has already taken all the names.
Okay, this is another common mistake you see that most of people are doing. It's about the apostrophe S and we're gonna have, I have another session about that, but I don't know when exactly. But I will, I will explain more in the next session or I'm gonna explain to you privately. Don't worry about that, but I have it for the next session. Because the apostrophe after S, when, 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 the, when the, the, uh, the, the name is plural, like children's here, like children's clothes, right? So, so because children is already plural, you need to just put apostrophe S, not S apostrophe, right? I'm not sure Muhammad really, but just uh, follow the group I sent to you and all things will be sent there. Okay, I think that's it, guys. See you, inshallah, in another session. I need to end this meeting. I will just open it. I'm just going to go and leave it because... Um, yeah, I need to get all your names before I leave. I'm not sure, but I'm just going to mute myself. And I will keep the meeting open. You, you can just leave. Uh, for your... A possessive S, mm -hmm. yeah, possessive S. The possessive S, when you're putting it to a singular, a singular noun, okay, you're putting apostrophe S. But when you're when you're putting it to an irregular plural, what are irregular plurals like men? It's not when you're when you're making man uh, the word man plural, you're just saying men. When you're making the word woman as plural, you just say women. When you're making child, you say children, right? All these irregular plurals, we just put apostrophe S. You got the idea, Yus? Okay, great. Okay, great, Mr. De, thank you. Uh, so guys, I would like to thank you again for one last time and see you inshallah in other sessions. Best of luck and bye bye, see you. Always welcome, always welcome. Thanks.